All right, looks like we're live. So we have, let's wait for some people to join in. It's just starting right now. So uh, we're going to be doing an awesome show for today where we're going to be talking about the movie Tenet and the gas masks that we're using it. And if, if you guys are familiar with the channel, you probably recognize some of these gas masks because they were once by Mira Safety. So at the very uh, final scene of it, there was a big battle there, spoiler alert. And you'll, you're going to see a lot of these type of mass masks in addition to other ones over there. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of dive into that. And we have a very special guest for this one with Roman, who is the, the founder, CEO of Mirror Safety. So we're going to dive into that now. Let's see if everyone could hear us so far. Let's see, looking at the chat room there. So if you could hear, uh, say hello in the chat room and I'll, then we'll get going on this one. So I see that the Apex, the Apex Prepper is there. Uh, and is uh, chiming in. He's going to be con doing uh, crowd control on this one. So I'll just I'll just give it a few minutes, and then we'll get started. Okay, people are people are saying hi. Okay, cool. Well, I think we'll just start get, getting going into it. So, hello from Graham. Okay, we got uh, prepper agenda. Hello, hello, Mike. Hello, Carlos. Welcome, oh, Carlos from Puerto Rico. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, you can hear great too. All right, so let's get going now. So without further ado, let's bring on the founder, president of Mira Safety, Roman, and we're going to get going with this. So let's welcome Roman to the live stream. This is going to be fun. Hey, Cliff, how you doing? Thank you good. for having me on. Yeah, good to see you again. So it's been uh, as well. it's been a several months since the last time that you were on, and, and back then uh, it was kind of early coronavirus time, and so I think you were kind of really sheltered in place at that time. So how are yeah, things going? Yeah, uh, we were going through a big transition in our company at that time. Um, as you can imagine, we've grown quite a bit over yeah. the course of this year, considering what's going on with coronavirus and then compounded with civil unrest. And then, I mean, 2020 has been kind of this unpredictable hodgepodge of uh, events that are just coming at us one after another. So, um, you know, people are getting prepared. They're more interested in personal protective equipment. So this whole year has been focused on growing our company streamlining operations getting more customer service people yeah more guys in the warehouse expanding production it's been uh you know we haven't really rested much this whole year so i'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to a, a time where coronavirus is no longer an issue and we can go on vacation or something so <laughs> now, now when you do when you do go out and about out and about what mask are you wearing uh usually the cm6m uh yeah. if i'm going to a place that's like you know i try to avoid people for the most part um, I don't go to the grocery store anymore. Hey, can you hear me? You you froze up a little bit. Okay, oh, there you go. We're back. They, they tried they back. try to shut us down. <laughs> I, I was I was inverting there. Sorry. It was I, uh so uh I don't go to the grocery store anymore. Yeah. Uh I just do Instacart. Um yeah. and you know, I try to avoid people for the most part. Uh I kind of moved over into the suburbs. I was last time we spoke, I was in an apartment uh mm -hmm. uh in Austin you know, closer to downtown, but now I'm kind of more on the outskirts further away. And, uh, but when I'm out and about, like when I went to go see Tenet, I wore the CM6M mask, uh, yeah. cause you're in a, you know, well, there's a lot of people in the movie theater and whatnot, even though they do separate and put everybody in these like pods and, uh, they have a pretty good system here. Um, cool. I just try to stay away for the most part. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I I did bring the the CM six M with me to to attend it, but then I switched to more of a half face mask during it. But then uh, over in Washington, at least it's it's they're, they're calling it phase three over here. So the nearest person to us is probably about thirty feet away. So mm. you're technically allowed to have popcorn at that point. Yeah. But uh, but it was a lot of fun. Well, I, I thought so, we could so just. What did you think of the movie? Did you see it? Yeah. So was, let's get down into tenant. Yeah, I definitely watched it, and I. Feel like am I still there? I'm. You're here. I could hear you. Okay, cool. Sorry, yeah. it's, I keep hearing it cut in and out. But uh, yeah, I saw it. It was awesome. It was quite the mind bender. And my, I brought my my wife came with me. She had no idea what the movie was going in, and she was uh, trying to, to keep up. But uh, as far as all the different uh, plot lines and timelines and stuff that was going on, she thought it was a, a prepper movie. And I'm like, no, it's Christopher Nolan. <laughs> it's a it's, it's this awesome movie, and so yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why she thought it was just a, pre, a, a prepper movie, but uh, right. we really well, liked it. She's going with you, so she figured. Yeah, it she's like, a prepper you, movie. Yeah, she's like, are you seriously <laughs> wearing that gas mask to the movie theater? Is, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I guess, uh, this is for business purposes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm talking to Roman coming up. Well, can you talk a little bit about the the background as far as how you got? Because the CM six M, there's a whole. Uh, by the way, everyone watching, spoiler alert: we're going to be talking about stuff in the movie Tenet. So, uh, 
but even if we do give up spoilers, it's still, uh, it's not going to give anything away because it's a very complex movie. Even if I tried to spoil the movie for people, I couldn't. Just yeah. because it's it's such a complex timeline and, and the plot and it kind of loops in on itself. It, it's very, it's a Christopher Nolan movie yeah. at its like peak. Yeah. So, you know, as you as you've you've probably seen other Christopher Nolan movies, yep. he tends to do mind bender uh type of flicks, you know, he likes to you know, cr uh, create a non-linear timeline for the movie uh, as he did with Memento and, yep. and other movies. So, uh this is definitely one of those Christopher Nolan movies that, you know, it, it's I would say it's his most complex work to date. Uh it's like Inception but yep. complicated. Yeah, so if you thought Inception was complicated, <laughs> it's it's not complicated in comparison to to Tenet. That's how yeah, I've been some, some people I've spoken to with very high IQs, like, yeah, I got the whole thing. Yeah, it goes backwards, forwards. I, I get the whole thing, and I'm just I'm just not that smart, I guess. I, I've went to go see it now <laughs> three times. Yeah, and I'm almost there, like a hundred percent on everything as it's happening. Uh, but there's still like you know towards the end. Uh, you know, I don't want to give away any major spoilers, but. Uh, Neil's timeline is still not fully clear to me. Yeah, you know, at you know when he was actually in the future, how he was recruited. Not re you know, I don't want to go too deep into it. I don't want to give away any spoilers because I'm, I'm sure a few people here haven't seen it. Yeah, when I uh, before going into it, I, I watched the whole spoiler <laughs> review of it, so I would oh, <laughs> and, uh, and then I still watched it, and it was still kind of co real complicated. And then we watched a few other ones, and I was learning all about kind of the whole time theory that was used yeah. for it. But it was a uh, but uh, again, I went into it looking for these gas masks that were using mm -hmm. it because I knew that it was going to be uh, featuring mm -hmm. the ones that you had there. How did they reach out to you as far as, uh, did someone just put a huge order in for like 300 gas masks? Yeah, so, so the way it happened was uh, it was last May and uh, we, we received a missed call. Like at that time, we were still kind of, we were growing, uh, but the company wasn't anywhere near where it is today. And uh, so we received a missed call. I called back. And then it went straight to message that this is a secured line by Warner Brothers. And wow. I was like, oh man, a secured line by Warner Brothers. I mean, that's that's a little that's a little strange. Uh, so uh, but 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 I couldn't get through. So good thing they left the message and I called back. And uh, the lady I spoke, she's like, Yeah, you know, we ordered your masks, and uh, Chris really likes your masks. And yeah. by Chris, they mean Chris Nolan, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, that that's great. And they're like, yeah, you know, uh, we want to feature them. And the way these arrangements typically work is, you know, you send us whatever we need, and you get featured in the movie. You know, yeah. it's not, you know, if they reach out to you, then usually it's, um, uh, you know, exposure in exchange for product. If you reach out to them, you know, there are product placement companies out there. Uh, they they'll charge you. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, Coca Cola. Uh, for somebody to drink a Coke and let's say World War Z, I remember they had a Coke scene. I think Coca-Cola yeah. paid like millions of dollars just for a few second scene. So yeah. we didn't have to pay millions of dollars. It was, it was free for us. Uh, the catch was we did have to send them, you know, 350 masks. That's a lot so of masks. Yeah, yeah it's, a lot, it's a lot of masks. Uh, but it was for a big scene. And, um, you know, it was very, it was exciting to me because I've always been a huge fan of Christopher Nolan. Uh, so... Uh, you know, just just the fact that he was interested in our product, I was like, you know, at that time, 350 masks for us was a big deal, and it's still a big deal today. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um. So uh, we just decided, hey, you know, Christopher Nolan doesn't, you know, his team doesn't call you every day asking for a product placement, so we have yeah. to do it. Like, no matter what, we have to do it. Uh, yeah. And so in that big that, that big final scene, they they were using the the CM six M, and it looked like kind of like the, the particle max style filter. Then on it was it, it was a particle max style filter. Yeah, okay. So, so it was a particle. But it didn't have max it didn't filter. have the white. It didn't have the bright white though. It was like more of the gray. Yeah. So this is this is actually uh, the mask that was used in the movie. Uh, this is a movie prop. This was used on on screen, and as you can see, this is a standard particle max filter. Yeah. The big difference is this one's hollow. So ah. we specifically made this for the movie uh, without the P3 filter inside of it mm -hmm. uh, because that lowers breathing resistance considerably. Yep. And, you know, these guys are running around sweating and, you know, this was a very active scene. Um, and doing so with a real gas mask, you know, with actual breathing resistance would have been really hard for the actors over the course of a full month because they shot that scene over the course of a, pretty much a full month with hundreds of extras. Um, so it was just, uh, you know, they, they liked the P3 filter and, uh, they didn't like the white label on it. So we put 
uh, a gray label yeah. that we had printed up and uh, they allowed us to keep our logo on there. I don't know if you saw the- uh, I did see the logo, the logo during it. Insignia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time I saw it, I would just sit there and giggle. You're like, and, yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was fortunate enough to get one signed by Christopher Nolan and sent over to me. So that is so cool. A, you're gonna you have to mount that somehow. Uh, and put yeah, it in, I'm gonna in create a, nice a little display case. case. I'm, I'm, we're very excited about it. We're gonna put it in the office and uh, you know uh, have it for the whole team to look at and kind of uh, remember this uh, momentous thing that you know we were in a Chris Nolan movie. It just yeah, it's just now, awesome. You know, it's unreal. And in that final, it's it's uh, how how do I explain it? Like they need to have the gas mask to breathe air because when they're going back through time and they're inv inverting through it, they you 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 need the air for that. But that final scene right. it was a was a big kind of battle where uh, I was trying to. They had the particle mask filter on it, but did did the people that were inverting in that scene also have oxygen coming through for that at the same time? I was yeah, trying to do so, that. Part so of the whole the whole uh, thing with masks. Uh, is uh, within that scene, some people had just a filter on it because yeah. you know you're in a dusty environment and there may be uh, hazardous things in the environment, uh, so they want to protect from that. But and the other guys had uh, inverted oxygen attached, uh, so inverted oxygen uh, is needed in order to invert because if you invert, then you also need inverted inverted oxygen to breathe in while you're going through that. Um, so that's why they had the tubes coming out of the side. Yeah, I thought that was, uh, I was keeping an eye on all the little uh, details on it. And then there was also the scene where, uh, the, the main character, uh, there were some times where they didn't have the, the insert in it, I think probably cause it, for movie purposes, it. Right. They wanted to show the characters faces. So, yeah. you know, they, they took it out and they told us, they were like, Hey, we're going to modify these masks slightly, but they will be, you know, you could still see uh you know exactly what the mask is but we're going to add a tube or something else to it and i was i was perfectly fine with that so yeah have you been noticing people uh purchasing the mask specifically because it was in the movie tenant then uh we've had a few people we've yeah. had a few people uh we, we we got a review on our website somebody went to go see it and then they already bought the mask and they were really excited that it was featured in the movie they're big christopher nolan fans yeah i'm sure you know come halloween this is going to be a popular item because you know, it has a dual purpose now. You're protecting yourself from coronavirus and uh, yeah, we, <laughs> tear gas. And, you know, Halloween's going to come right around the time of the election. So I expect there to be quite a bit of uh, tear gas deployed in the coming months. Yeah, we, we always do a big Halloween thing. Uh, normally, I jump out of the bushes as, as Leatherface. But uh, now with the <laughs> coronavirus, and that's like the one time of the year I could do that and scare little kids uh, and not get arrested <laughs> for it. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but you got to be careful doing that any other yeah. time of year, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we have the, the our local cops are in on it and everything, and we do a big skit with them. So it's, it's a lot of fun because we, we have a like fourteen hundred trick or treaters normally, but uh, which wow. is crazy. And so we have like a ticket person and security. But uh, mm. uh, this year we're doing with more of a coronavirus theme, so we're all going to be in hazmat suits and we're going to be having our gas masks on. And there, there'll be a lot of mirror safety products in there too. So okay, it'll be cool. it'll awesome. be like it, it'll be like zombie hazmat. Style. Take some pictures. Yeah, I, I'll definitely will, and I'll, I'll ta <laughs> we'll tag you on it. Yeah, but yeah, we're going kind of kind of like the e, uh, the scene in ET at the very end with all the plastic sheeting and stuff and, and tubes. So we're, that's kind of the, the what we're going with on this one. So after they use all the 350 gas masks, what do they do? You get them back, used ones, or, or do no? You, so do you um, part of the agreement was, you know, whenever it comes to movie placement stuff, like you got to agree on things beforehand. Yeah. Like once you sign on the dotted line, there's no changes, you know. So before I sent them anything, I was like, well, number one, we need to be in the credits because mm -hmm. we're giving you, you know, almost a hundred thousand dollars worth of product. Yeah. So you got to put us in the credits. And at first they were like, well, I don't know, we got to talk and this and that. And they, they spoke to Chris about it and Chris okayed it. He was yeah. like, okay, you can put them in the credits. And then uh, I also had uh, agreed for them to send me back 10 masks, one of which yeah. was signed. So this is yeah. one of 10 masks that I have, which I'm going to do like 10 masks for 10 at kind of like a display uh, in my office. Yeah. Um, so I got that back and um yeah, I mean, uh, they, they beat these masks up pretty good. So, like, <laughs> halfway through, they were like, hey, we need more masks. So, they got an extra 50 masks. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, polycarbonate, sand, dust, dirt, they artificially kind of tried to make them look even more weathered and beaten. Yeah. Um, and over the course of a month, just abusing these masks, I mean, they got pretty scratched up. And they, they needed 
uh, to see the faces better for the main actors, you know, Paul, uh, uh, Robert Pattinson and uh, John David Washington. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had, they had big roles with these uh, products. So. So when did all the, the when did the initial shipment and the filming happen? Because I know like earlier this spring, if you if they put an order for three hundred fifty, uh, you guys everyone was it was uh, that's like in the early coronavirus time. So oh yeah, no, we we wouldn't have been able to do it now at yeah. all because we just we just didn't have the product. I mean, we yeah. just recently got back into stock and uh, you know through our back order, which we're we're very kind of happy that we we got through that. Um, but they it started last May. And they were filming from like end of May to sometime in October. And they were mm -hmm. going all over the world. Um, they were going to, uh, you know, India and Estonia and Norway. I mean, this is a globe trotting kind of massive budget, you know, picture here. Um, I think the budget was 220 million. You know, and just to put that into comparison, Avatar was 160 million. So this oh. was like a lot more than Avatar. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we wrapped up by October and then I was under NDA, obviously. I think when mm -hmm. we spoke like a year ago, I was like, yeah, you know, we're going to be in this cool movie, but I can't tell you anything about it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <you> yeah. Know, <laughs> uh, I can't wait to tell you, but I'll, I'll let you know once things, you know, come out and are clear. And, and yeah. the only time I really started talking about it was when they released in the, on the trailer, they had, they showed our mask. So then mm -hmm. I could say, okay, you know, the mask is going to be in the movie because it was featured in the trailer, which is public information at that point. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it just, the whole thing, it, it felt like it was destiny almost for them to call us. And, and, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the way they found us was seeing your review because you hey, did it sometime. That'd be cool. <laughs> You're, you were one of our earlier reviewers uh, yeah. last year, early last year. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if, based on your review, they found that and then reached out to us. That'd be super cool. Well, uh, yeah, I, I changed the title in that review video to, to uh, the, the gas mask from Tenet. So just, mm. uh, uh, and, but man, that'd be pretty awesome. So that, and it sounds like uh, Christopher Nolan was already a fan of it. So may, who knows? Maybe. Uh, well, I think they tried a bunch of different masks, um, and you know, they they chose the one which has the best field of view and which yeah. could look good on camera. And yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think the uh, CM6M met both of those uh, requirements. So. And what, what were the other, because the CM6M one was, wasn't the only gas mask in there. They had some more like the tactical style ones yeah. with less visibility in it. Uh, mm -hmm. So what were some of the other ones that you saw in this one? Or maybe we could talk about that too. Yeah. So uh, the movie starts off with the protagonist wearing uh, the MSA Millennium mask, which is mm -hmm. a very popular mask with police departments. Uh, it's got this kind of bubble style, you know, full face visor. And in comparison to the CM6, I'm, the visor is actually soft. Um, yeah. What the purpose of a soft visor is, I'm not really sure. I'm sure it has some tactical <laughs> application. Uh, but, you know, it's not really good for riot control because if you get punched in the face, it's soft. You're going you're gonna to feel the uh, hit pretty hard. Um, also in the beginning, uh, the SWAT team was wearing uh, M50 masks. Uh, which are mm -hmm. Avon products. Yep. Um, they have like a goggle style field of view. Uh, great masks. Uh, they're actually actively used by the US military. Um, later on, the protagonist uh, and Neil in the airport scene where they're going, or right, spoiler alert, guys, uh, <laughs> <laughs> where there's an inversion scene happening and they're wearing masks. Uh, those are the uh, Foshida A4 masks. Um, I, I don't own one personally, so I, I don't really have too much yeah. experience with that mask. Uh, I mean, but it's it's a it's a it's a cool product, and uh, we actually sent them for that scene the CM seven M mask, which is yeah. our uh, more tactical one. We sent them a few dozen units, uh, but they didn't make the final cut. Um, but you know, it's uh, I guess they chose that mask instead for that scene, which is cool. Um, Probably because you could see the eyes better. Remember that one scene where they zoom into yep. the eye at the end? It's like yeah. just to show you that, that it's him. Yeah. Um, I guess maybe there was, you know, the window on the A4 for the eye, the visor was a little bigger. So uh, they chose that mask instead. This is a funny comment here by a third eye, uh, third eye guy, Roman. It would have been funny if you had been an extra in the movie. I, I totally agree that that. <laughs> 
Yeah, that would have been great. Uh, that should have been in the contract. You know, <laughs> at, at that time, uh, my negotiation skills weren't that, you know, uh, tuned, fine tuned. Yeah. Um, I could have asked for more for sure, considering I'm giving them a pretty sizable donation, so to yeah. speak, for the movie. Um, I, I wanted to negotiate at least getting um, preview tickets, like to go to the uh, grand opening. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it was too late. And I was like, I don't want to be that guy who's like, well, the deal's off unless I get tickets now to go <laughs> see it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, we're, we're very, we're very excited to work with them and, and we're happy with the way it came out and the way the products were presented and the movie in general. I mean, for many, you know, it's got mixed reviews. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes, some people are just like WTF, you know, what, it, what just happened there? I don't yeah. understand anything. Um, some were saying that, you know, Christopher Nolan was uh, trying too hard to be Christopher Nolan as opposed to making like a warm, you know, movie that people can connect with. But yeah. some people say it's a masterpiece. Yeah. And uh, I agree. I agree with that sentiment. Because, you know, for me, I like movies that engage my mind, that I really have to think about deeply to fully unwrap, uh, you know, the whole plot. I mean, for me, that's interesting. That's why I've always loved Christopher Nolan, because he, he does complex movies, so. Yeah, that's, I, I really thought it was a, a brilliant movie. And most of the time with, when we, my wife and I were driving home, she was like, well, the, the could have had more character development, because I wasn't as emotionally attached to what was going on with these characters. But mm -hmm. normally after a movie, we're not sitting there analyzing the movie and going on YouTube afterwards and reading our, it's it really got our brain thinking and we're learning all about time travel and all the stuff that was a uh, yeah. scientific term. And it gets much the better visit. after the first viewing. So the first yeah. time I saw it, I had to take a bathroom break midway <laughs> and that completely destroyed the whole movie. For me. <laughs> yeah, you're after, done. <laughs> after the bathroom break, I took a bathroom break right as they were in the container yeah, uh, going backwards to go to uh, where, the one with the little uh, where he uh, spoiler alert where he, he fights a uh, person that inverted. Yeah, right before culture. that, and there was a okay, lot yeah. of uh, exposition there. There was a lot of discussion about how it works and the grandfather paradox, and yeah, you know all these other all, all these other themes. And I missed like you know three minutes of that, and that's it. That was done. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't understand anything moving forward. I was lost. Yeah. So so my wife had to fill me in. She was like, "What? Well, you didn't get it." You know, I was like, no, I didn't. And uh, she had to explain <laughs> it to me. Uh, and then we went two more times to see it. The first time I went to see it was in regular IMAX, mm -hmm. uh, which is really Limax, as they call it. It's not the real IMAX. Uh, it's on a smaller screen. They don't use the high-end projectors. And the next two times we went to go see it was at the uh, Bullock Theater uh, in Austin, Texas, which is, you know, uh, associated with a museum. Okay. Uh, and they have, like, the huge 70-foot screen with the IMAX laser projectors. And that's really the, you know, format that Christopher Nolan wants you to see the movie. In. Okay. You know, that that that's the intent, and that that's why he didn't want to release it straight to video, is because the whole, you know, it would kill the purpose of the movie. I mean, it's yeah. a big action movie that's supposed to immerse you into the characters, into their world, um, and putting it on the tiny screen like that after spending two hundred million dollars, it just doesn't do justice, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad he did release it because it is helping a lot of. You know, smaller movie theaters get through this time because mm -hmm. you know, uh, as I'm sure w when you went, there probably wasn't too many people in the movie theater, right? It was, no, this it was. Uh, there was probably 12 of us in this humongous theater. We we're all right. very well separated, right? But it, it still did feel pretty good to go. I hadn't been to a movie theater for a long, long time. I mean, oh yeah, um, I mean, so. it's it's kind of good going back to normal. It feels great, um, and I and I really feel for these movie theaters. You know, these these businesses that yeah. uh, are getting hit so hard. You know, there's certain businesses that are just getting really uh having a hard time uh yeah. with attendance and people coming in and uh, losing a lot of money so i really hope that they could weather the storm uh past covid and stay open um otherwise these you know big giant movie conglomerates are going to come in and just swallow up all these theaters and it'll be all you know big corporate owned so mm -hmm. yeah i what i like about his movies is that uh I, I I like the the there's not as much well there's CG but it's not like uh fake scenes like there that plane scene a spoiler alert uh that, that looks like it's a real plane that they crashed into that it's a thing. real plane they bought uh, a real is, airplane and they that's crashed crazy it. yeah <laughs> because they thought it was more practical than using miniatures and yeah you know, so, Chris, Christopher Nolan he's big on using practical effects what I think those uh, stand the test quoted, of time too yeah. yeah he was quoted saying that. Tenet uses less visual effect shots than most romantic comedies. Wow. 
So that's that's his whole thing. He tries to make everything practical, and they had to like reinvent the IMAX camera to make it shoot in reverse. And wow. I mean, it's uh, you know, say what you want about the movie, but from a technical aspect, like it's it's really incredible what they did there. Yeah. Um, and and to make it look real, you know, the forward and backward scenes, like seeing was, that and how it was so cool <laughs> he's going forwards and another guy's going backwards and like trying to wrap your head around like he's traveling backwards through time yeah as the other guy's moving forward through time it's just mind-boggling i love it I yeah mean, i can't i, I, I think i'm so done cool. at three times i'm gonna wait for it to come out on blue right now so i can analyze it and then i'm gonna sit there with my uh screenplay and oh and look at i got that. the official christopher nolan screenplay here and uh, I'm going to be reading through it to, to really kind of dissect all the little uh, nuances of, the, uh, of what was being said. And then I also have another cool book here, which I got, uh, Inside the Secrets of Tenet. Wow. Uh, so this goes kind of deep into the movie and how it came together, how they created the visual effects. And there's actually quite a cool section here that shows the final scene. Let me see if I could find it real quick. Yeah, so it shows the final scene and people getting wow. exploded here. And there's a whole lot of uh, CM6MS in this uh, book as well. So that I'm excited awesome. that I made the book. Yeah. So I'm going to have those two to figure it out. Um, and then I also have one more prop piece. I got this watch, this Hamilton watch. Wow, look at that. And this is like the special edition watch that was used for the movie. But... It didn't have the uh, digital readout. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they didn't do the re digital readout, but this is like the Tenet Special Edition. I decided to get one just to have as a kind of a souvenir, and it comes That's in this a, cool box. So That is a very cool box. <laughs> yeah, this is for uh, red, so this is for moving Yeah, you're forward. the red team. Yeah, you're on the, I'm red, the team. red team. Yeah, Moving forward. <laughs> uh, Always I, moving forward, right? <laughs> yes. We have some questions here. One of them, this is for the Apex Prepper. Uh, have you learned anything about your own masks from the movie industry and ways to improve or make changes? Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to change our masks to be better suited for movies, but, um, there, there was one thing we learned, which, uh, you know, for polycarbonate, and we've known this for quite some time, it does scratch. So, you know, if you take sand, grit, you know, dirt and rub it on there, it's mm -hmm. gonna, it's gonna, you know, distort the picture. Um, it's going to distort, you know, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to damage the visor. So we're actually releasing, uh, pretty soon, uh, tear offs, uh, which oh. are going to work similarly to dirt like bike tear offs. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so basically it's, it's several layers on the mask and you just, um, uh, once you dirty up one layer, you just tear it off and you have another layer underneath that. Um, so that way we can, uh, you know, for, for people who work with drywall or, um, even, even for, you know, police who are involved in riot control situations, if they get something thrown on their mask, splat, you know, some kind of chocolate milk or a shake thrown on them, uh, you know, you're going to be all fogged up and all blurry. So if you yeah. just tear off the outer just, layer, that's awesome. you're, that's you're back to, you're back to seeing perfectly well. So, and we're yeah. going to have that in a tinted version, uh, along with a, a standard, uh, you know, clear transparent version. Very cool. Uh, this yeah. is another one. This is from uh, Polaris. Is, will there ever be self recharging mask filters manufactured by Mira? Um, so uh, you can't regenerate a filter uh, because filters have activated carbon. It would require a totally different type of technology. Uh, you know, this is still this technology goes back. I don't know about a hundred years. I mean, it's it's filter paper. Mm -hmm. uh, we use Ulpa filtration paper graded at U sixteen. It goes on a scale up to 17, uh, along with activated carbon. And the activated carbon is impregnated with metal halides. Uh, so metal halides are essentially metal salts, and mm -hmm. they bind these contaminants as they go through. And really, the, uh, the secret sauce to making a filter is figuring out the right blend of metal halides to impregnate with the activated carbon to achieve the level of protection you're, you need for the task at hand. Uh, it, it's kind of like cooking, you know, uh, except a lot more complicated and with a lot more chemicals and, <laughs> you know, metals and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, uh, that sounds interesting. Um, but for now it's, uh, you know, th this is the, the technology that, uh, we see as kind of the most, uh, practical for now until the next 
big thing comes along uh yeah you know for our r d team <laughs> yeah this is from a uh, prepper agenda over here i love the idea of the tear house will it work with the current models out yeah so, so it'll work with the cm6m uh and we also have another mask coming out the cm8m uh, which it will fit with as well. And the CM8M is kind of a hybrid between the CM6M and the CM7M, where it, look, it has similar structure to the CM7M, but it's going to have a, a goggle-style visor uh, and a six-point head harness to better distribute the weight, um, along with possibly being released with a built-in microphone. Or we might okay. sell the microphone as a separate thing to connect to uh, Peltor headsets. So we're going to have uh, comm systems, which are reverse compatible as well. Wow. Uh, and you could attach that comm system to CM6M, CM7M, CM8M, uh, and also the uh, half face tactical respirator, which we have coming out. So we have, yeah, that, we have a bunch of new products released. That, that was going to be my next, next question because uh, when I'm out and about, normally I wear where's my masks out there? I have masks all over the place. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I normally prefer like a half face mask just because. Mm. People like seeing your eyes, I think, and they get a little, they freak out if I show up to the grocery store with this. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there, so there's going to be a, a mirror safety half face mask at, at some point coming out. And when could we expect that? Yeah. In the next, uh, we're, we're, we're aiming to release it before uh, the holiday season. Uh, so it's going to be the half face mask. It's going to be compatible with comm systems. It's going to have a 40 millimeter NATO threaded port. So you can use a 40 millimeter uh, filter on there. Uh, and it's also going to have a whole bunch of attachment systems for, for helmets. Uh, so, you know, no matter what kind of helmet you have, or if you want to wear it without a helmet, you're able to do so uh, with this mask. And it, it's, it's really going to be a competitive product to the uh, uh, OpsCore SOTR solder. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but mm. a lot of the tactical guys are running uh, the Ops Core solder now as a half face respirator. Um, and it's, it's a great product. I actually have one here. Uh, yeah. but, uh, only thing is it doesn't have the 40 millimeter, uh, filters. So you're kind of stuck with just whatever filter they provide, which is just a P3 filter. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to have, you know, you could wear activated carbon filters with it as well. Yeah. So let's see on this. This is from climate preparedness. How much of a problem is a th three-day stubble beard when wearing a mask? Is that much of an issue? Yeah, I've, well, I'll let everybody's, you, that, yeah. you know, three-day stubble is different for everybody. I mean, yeah. I don't grow much facial hair. So this this is my three-day stubble, right? right. <laughs> uh, three-day stubble for Urban Prepper might be what he has on there now. That's probably, you know, this, I've been growing this for years. This is <laughs> <laughs> um, So it, it, it just depends. Uh, we typically don't recommend it. You know, a lot of guys who wear beards, you know, they just refuse to shave it because, you know, their wives don't let them or yeah. they don't think it looks good. Um, they'll just, uh, they'll have a beard trimmer in their kit. So yeah, uh, in case something I, happens, you just go, J -j 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 -j. I mean, it could take you, you know, five, 10 minutes and now you're good. Yeah. Uh, and then some other guys also run, uh, they uh, use Vaseline to cover the seal because it does seal a little better with using Vaseline. Uh, does it work? Yes, it does. Uh, can we recommend that as safety professionals? We can't recommend that. Yeah. You know, uh, just because, you know, the best way to do it is to have a clean shaven face. You're going to get the best possible seal that way. And you also want to make sure that you fit test your mask, make sure it fits, do a negative pressure test, as you've shown in some of your yep. videos before, uh, to make sure that it does seal onto your face, that there are no leaks before you wear it during, you know, an emergency situation. So unofficially for us preppers that do have a gas mask in their get home bags or bug out bags, unofficially, we should probably include some Vaseline in there as well, just to help out with a little bit. Yeah. Vaseline and a beard trimmer and a beard you know, trimmer. in case you, you grow a beard. You know? Yeah. I, I have a, I definitely now in my kids, I have this one particular one, uh beard trimmer. That's fairly yeah. inexpensive. And you know what, even, even if you don't grow much of a beard, like a guy like me who just has a little stubble here and there, um, it's good to keep a beard trimmer in your kit. Because let's say you have to bug out, right? And you have to get away from your home uh, and you don't know when you're coming back next time. So if you're going to take your CBRN kit with you in a bag over the course of a few days, you know, you might need to trim your beard. Um, yeah. So you want to take a beard trimmer with you no matter what. It's a great addition to your kit. Yeah, look at through the comments over here. So some people... Talking about their mask, they don't take it off in California. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's one of the things that with everything going on now, a lot of people are wearing. 
uh, the cloth, the cotton cloth ones when they're out mm-hmm. about and with, with big beards and stuff. So it's, a uh, it's hard for me because I like, yeah. to think, you know, like the real deal mask, like what you have. Yeah. And so, like, and you know, I'll, 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 I'll say something about that. Um, you know, a lot of people reach out and they're like, you know, do these cloth masks even work? Uh, so we did do some testing on cloth masks and N95 masks, yeah. uh, uh, with, uh, liquid aerosols and liquid aerosols is how COVID travels. Mm-hmm. Uh, so an N95 mask, which received one of the higher ratings was about 50% efficient at filtering out liquid aerosols. So essentially 50% of the liquid aerosols went right through the medium of the mm-hmm. uh, N95 mask. Um, the cloth masks, I believe were, uh, slightly below 40%. Um, and, and, you know, so people ask, okay, well, with that information, what's the point of even wearing, uh, uh, one of these masks? And, and the point is really, uh, to stop projecting your saliva. You mm-hmm. know, if, if you're wearing a mask like that, you know, obviously there's going to be some viral particulates getting out, but you know, some people are, you know, spitty talkers, you know, they, you know, <laughs> when they talk, they, uh, release a lot of uh, saliva, and uh, it's just it's just good to contain it as much as possible, so it doesn't project out. Uh, it stays more localized. So it's kind of like uh, uh, how we teach our kids to hey, cover your mouth before you sleep. It, right. Not that it's going to prevent everything, but it's going to stop that. that enough exactly, time. it's going to yeah. stop something, and and stopping something is better than nothing. So yeah, cool. Do have people been coming to you a lot for these t- style questions? As far as uh, they've been asking. I mean, because because yeah. you know, all of a sudden uh, since January. I think a million different companies came about with uh, selling face masks. Uh, some companies that were producing other things are reverting to producing face masks, and uh, face masks are like a big hot thing right now. I mean, yeah. if you go on, you know, Facebook and just scroll through your feed, I mean, every other ad is like face mask, face masks, new Kickstarter for face masks. Um, so uh, you know, people people are concerned. They want to know, you know, will it protect you? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it'll do something, but it's not, it's not foolproof. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, videos of virologists in a lab, you know, they're, they're in full hazmat garb and wearing, they're not, wearing, they're a full not wearing, face they're not wearing bikini bottoms on their face. Though. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, so it's not foolproof. I mean, it's better than nothing. Um, you know, but you know, if you're really looking to protect yourself, uh, it's recommended to wear a full face respirator because you got to block your eyes. You got to have a good sealer on your face. Uh, and even more important is knowing how to use the equipment and knowing how to decontaminate. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, a lot of people will go out, you know, oh, I'll go to the supermarket, I'll put this on. And then they get into their car, they're touching it, they're taking it off, then they're oh, scratching their eyes. face. Oh, yeah, yeah, their <laughs> eyes. And, you know, and, and that's not the right way to do it. Yeah. The right way to do it is to come home and jump into a decontamination shower right away. Yeah. And not take the mask off until you get home, take off your clothes, put them straight into the washer, start running it, and and then, you know, go into your your bathroom and take a shower while wearing your mask and decontaminate your entire body. Then it's safe to remove your mask. I mean, if you want to, if you want to get, you know, professional about your uh, procedure, so... Awesome. Uh, look at there's one of a couple questions. Uh, uh, does the Vaseline break down the silicone seal over time? Um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't know the answer. It okay. might maybe D- depends on the, the compound of the mask. I suppose I'd have to ask my uh, you know chemical engineers the, yeah. <laughs> on our team who 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 work with the rubber uh, that question. Good question, Apex That's a, good question, That's a yeah. nice one. Uh, this, let's see. The, the, everyone's, I see people talking about the, the the one that you probably get it a lot as far as the difference between the check and the CM6 CM6 and the Mira CM6. Um, let, let's see. This I think you, you you always get this question a lot. I think so as far as the differences between these two ones. Um, because I can't CM6. I can't buy the check ones like I unless I don't. Yeah. I so. Yeah, so just to clear that up, so so Mira Safety actually uh, serves as the uh, retail arm of a few defense contractors, uh, one being Gumarni Zubri, uh, the other one being Avec Chem, uh, both based in the Czech Republic. Uh, so the CM6, the Czech CM6 is the same mask, except the CM6 doesn't come with the drinking system. 
Uh, and our, uh, you know, the Mirror Safety CM6 is also going to be released soon with a six-point head harness. Um, but, you know, essentially, uh, Gumada Nazubri and Ava Kem, uh, we have a relationship with them where they hire Mirror Safety as the retail kind of arm um, for the world, uh, along with the exclusive provider for their products for the North American market. Yeah. Um, Cool. Yeah. Everyone always, they always see that in the comment section. Let me see. This is the petroleum. This, this person, Steve says, yes, the petroleum jelly will affect it as will soaps with softeners in. Okay. <laughs> uh, great bit of advice over there. Uh, great input. So can we talk a little bit about some of the, uh, okay, uh, here's another one really quick. Prepper Agenda always has good questions. Any thoughts on our producing an inexpensive temporary respirator which will protect against carbon monoxide as well as everything else similar to Avon and H15? Oh, so an escape hood? Yeah, so we're going to have an escape hood coming out. Um, the thing with escape hoods is by law, you have to make it so the filters aren't replaceable. Um, you know, it has to be kind of a foolproof system. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're typically more expensive and they're made for, uh, they're, they're used a lot within uh, VIP protection. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, some of these private contractors who will protect you for money, basically, and run around with you and in case anything happens, give you products to use right on the spot. Uh, they're used for that mostly just because it's, uh, it's you know, they, they could afford it. Um, and, you know, they're, they're pretty expensive. Yeah. Uh, so you'd be paying pretty much the same price for a product where you can't replace the filters. That's the only issue. Mm. Um, you know, the, the, the Avon product that uh, Prepper Agenda mentioned, I believe it's over $200, $250. And it's a one-time use system. It's not meant to be reused. Uh, the benefit is a lot of these systems are compact. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the hood is foldable and the filter is smaller. It's made for a shorter duration for more specialized threats. So it's easier yeah. to kind of, you know, uh, put it in a smaller case and keep it inside of, you know, some kind of uh, Molly pouch on your, on your kid or, you know, just, just to minimize space. Um, so that is, that is a benefit, uh, but it does come at the expense of just higher price. Yeah, 200 um, bucks for a one-time use seems like, uh, I don't yeah, know if I could do that. Expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what's this one? Is there any reason you don't see advancement or a push in rebreather style masks like updated Soviet IP5? Um, not really. I don't. I don't really. I haven't researched much into the uh, rebreather realm. I don't own a rebreather myself. Um, I suppose it's just uh, older technology. Um, because why would you, you know, use a rebreather when you can use a, a filter? Mm -hmm. um, aside from not knowing. A contaminant source and that's why uh you know scbas are used and recommended when you don't know exactly what type of uh you know contaminants are in the air the safest thing to do is use an scba uh bring oxygen with you um because you don't know if your filter matches up to the uh the threat that you need to filter out yeah. um but that's a good question i i don't know um i don't really have much experience with rebreathers to be honest cool Let's see. Uh, we're, again, if you guys are just tuning in right now, we're talking from with Roman from Mira Safety, and we talked earlier on about the movie Tenet, which is a Christopher Nolan movie that's out, and it features uh, the Mira Safety gas mask. They they ordered 350 of them, uh, and Roman got some some <laughs> autograph one back. And there's a big cool Yay. scene. Yeah. <laughs> there's a cool scene at the very end of the movie where it's a big battle scene and. Uh, spoiler alert, there's, uh, there's some time travel involved and there's basically, I, I don't know, should I, should I even talk about that? There's basically one army going in, in real time and another doing something they're in, in, or invert kind of like a palindrome is both ways front yeah, of back. You, you and then, can't spoil it yeah. for anybody. Trust uh, me, even you if you, even it. if everything that you hear in this one, it's not going to spoil anything because it's so complex. It doesn't matter. So, uh, so, so I, there's links in the description box for, if you like this mask and you want to get the, the mask that's used in. Uh, tenant and if whether you want to be on the, the blue team or red team as far as your staff uh, there's the links are in the description box for this one so uh key uh, if, uh, uh, is there any other questions on tenant that i wanted to get to i i was uh i think we cover a lot of the stuff as far as the main scenes on there uh let's see did you is there any uh, anything that we might have missed on that one i mean there's just there's so much detail in the movie 
Um, yeah. it's just, once it starts, it's just heart pounding, continuous action, uh, with, you know, every, every scene is significant. Yeah. You know, the, the movie could have been a lot longer than it was. Um, and they could have expanded a lot on certain things to make it easier to follow. Uh, but I think they did a really good job at just condensing everything to the essentials, uh, and allow, you know, you to use your brain to figure out, you know, the, uh, the in between of that, uh, which a lot of people, you know, a lot of people want to go in and enjoy a movie. They don't want to sit there and like, you know, do a crossword have to, puzzle. Have to think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me, uh, Neil's timeline, and, and that's uh, the Robert Pattinson uh, character is super yeah. complex. Like, it's very uh, complex, yeah. he he's basically the Kyle Reese of of uh, uh, from Terminator of yeah uh, of Tenet. Then his voice. right, right, kind of yeah. Um, I still haven't fully figured out his timeline. No, I haven't. Um, I haven't figured out the the bad guy, the the main the 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 main villain's character on his motivation for uh basically he's trying to destroy the world through this uh the time thing. I'm like, why does he want to do that? He has he has a kid. Well he has he has he has cancer. Yeah. Right? I, I so, got that part, but so he also he's has just a kid. A, he's just an egomaniac. I mean, okay. he's a, he's like a sociopath, you know. Okay. He's so like, that, I have cancer, you know, I'm gonna die. So screw everybody. Yeah. I want to. I want to kill everybody, and I want to just destroy the whole world now. Uh, yeah, we, we're. What well, I don't was, understand is why the future gave him this technology to destroy the world. Yeah, the, it's hey, like, don't here, they want a go. future? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. That, that was the part I was trying to wrap my head around it. And then why would his? Why would the people that were working for him want to do that? Like <laughs> to destroy themselves too? I, I didn't. That was well, the maybe part they I was, just didn't understand what he was doing. Okay, yeah. So he kept you a know, little because he he kind of uh, compartmentalized all the information. And it seems like they're and, getting paid uh, well too for in gold. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, they had all these fancy suits, and they, those guys look good. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like you ask less questions, you keep getting paid by Mr. Andre Sator. Yeah, he, he he pays in gold bars too. And the, oh, yeah, gold bars. That, I mean, that one guy when he he he, tried, he ripped off that one gold bar. I thought yeah. that. inverted gold bars too. It inverted, yeah. <laughs> they just like they just jump into your hand. It's awesome. Yeah, that was, <laughs> well, well, one one connection there also was uh, I don't know if you researched the uh, Sator Square. The yes, Rotas I did. Square. I yeah. did. So there, there's a lot of that. There's Sator, uh, you know, which is Andre Sator. There's Arepo, yep. which is the name of the art dealer, yep. the, the 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 forger. Um, the Rotas, the construction company that built the uh, pentagram inverter, whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? What What are the other ones? I, I there's a YouTube video that really or doesn't, ten yeah. at the name of the movie, right? Yeah, and and it's all and and ten, it's ten and ten, right? So it yep. perfectly aligns with the end scene, which is ten uh, minutes forward, ten minutes back. Ah, uh, didn't even think of that. You get I, it, right? I know yeah. that the Neil's character, Matt, Matt, but it was his. Uh, man, uh, it doesn't matter. It's a spoiler alert. So, like Maximilian or whatever. Like they said that that was the end of that word was also like the inverse of Neil. It's, I saw all sorts of stuff. Yeah, on that. yeah, yeah. There, there's there's a rumor out there. Another spoiler. You're gonna have to when you when you release this video, like publish yeah. it on on YouTube. Yeah. You're gonna have to put like major spoilers. Yeah, uh, major spoilers. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert. So. <laughs> yeah, spoilers so Maximilian is uh, the the kid's name. Some people are saying that Neil is actually the older version of cat's son yeah and uh, yeah i think they that, that was what it was hinted towards it, the uh oh there's uh, another thing i was gonna talk about oh just totally spacing on it oh the the, the interesting i thought because michael kane has a little scene in there and he's mm -hmm. like in almost all the christopher nolan movies but right. they said that michael kane's character was he's also uh, in set I think Michael Caine's in Inception. They they had yeah. some parallels between the movies that oh that this actually is in the same universe type thing. Uh, yeah, with, you know, uh, Chris, Christopher Nolan has kind of a cult like following. Yeah, and and he's really one of the uh, last true you know real directors that creates original screenplays. You know, uh, and you know he's not just regurgitating the same Marvel stuff from the comic books and yeah. you know Batman over and over. I mean, even though he did Batman. Yeah, but, you know, he took he took a fresh spin on it, uh, but he has he has a lot of original movies, and he's really one of the last guys that gets a blank check to do that. Yeah, you know, not many guys can come to Warner Brothers and be like, "I got this great original thing. I need two hundred fifty million dollars." <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be like, uh, "Probably not," you know. Yeah. So uh, uh, I forget what I was what I was gonna say about that, but um, 
essentially, uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's a special kind of director. I mean, I, I compare him to kind of a, a modern day Stanley Kubrick, mm -hmm. you know, where, where the, the movies are very layered and deep and have, you know, undertones of our, our human condition and, you know, all this kind of, uh, information that doesn't, you know, show itself at the surface level, but once you look deeper into it is analogous to, you know, all these other interesting things. Yeah. So it'd be, it'd be, it would be pretty trippy if uh, the movie's so deep that it actually intertwines with the previous movie from several years ago in yeah. some way. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me though, that, if that were to happen. Yeah. Is, is there any plans on having a, uh, well, like a tenant branded uh, mask by a limited edition, special edition. No, uh, so that's one thing we didn't negotiate, which we probably could have, or maybe could have. Um, Cause uh, Hamilton, if you actually take a look at their marketing, uh, yeah. you're going to see that they uh, are doing trailers with this, with this product. And, and uh, if you look on tenantfilm.com, it's going to say Hamilton watch in the bottom. Like they, mm -hmm. they went into a deeper level of co-marketing. You know, mm -hmm. because they actually developed the product from scratch just for the movie, oh. um, and I'm sure you know they have they have much bigger team than us, Hamilton. Uh, but we were also in the credits, you know, just as they were in the same area, uh, in the special thanks section. Uh, it was us, Hamilton, and you know the government of India and a few other governments. So, well, I, yeah, I, I didn't. I, I actually, India, so. <laughs> yeah, I didn't stay for the credits. I should have. Uh, we were I, at that point. I was. I wanted to get some photos there with the gas mask, so I was worried about that. And my wife was like, "No, don't do it. You're going to embarrass me." Because <laughs> uh, uh, I'm like, "Hey, I'm talking to Roman on on Saturday, and I need yeah. to have some photos for this." But uh, <laughs> uh, but I didn't end up seeing the credits. So when I rewatch it, I'll be, to sh be sure to do that. Yeah, I went. Like, I went with my wife. She was a good sport about it. And at yeah. first she was like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm live streaming." She's like, "Okay," because <laughs> <laughs> I went I on I did like an Instagram live stream to go. Yeah. So. How, how does she feel about you going to the grocery store with the CM6M or going just out, out and about with it on? She's fine. I mean, you know, the uh, family it's, business. It's, why it's, it's the business, right? I yeah. mean, you got to practice what you preach, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you got to wear your own products. <laughs> so, uh, it's fine. I mean, you know, once again, we, we try to, uh, we just try to isolate as much as possible. Um, uh, and we, we, we're home most of the time. We're kind of homebodies. We have, you know, we have a, baby girl and uh we have we have a nice house in the suburbs and we're just trying to stay away from downtown austin um and yeah. kind of take care of what we need to take care of at home yeah, and, I tried to and with technology nowadays you really don't need to go out much i mean you know i'm, I'm kind of a an introverted extrovert so i'm perfectly fine with just being home yeah i, I love it it's yeah, I, I, I think uh, Austin's Austin's probably similar to Seattle as far as I try to stay away from like some of the the hot spots that uh, are going on over there right now. Any other? Uh, I was trying to think if there's any other like prepping type gear in the movie that might be worth mentioning or not. But uh, what? Uh, any kind of overall thoughts as far as uh, preparedness strategies in today's kind of not related to uh, to tenant or anything, but just what's going on right now in the world as far as stuff that you've noticed or? Yeah. Uh, um... Yeah, you know, uh, food's still very important. Um, food and water will be the reasons why many people are driven away from the comfort of their own home. Yeah. Uh, because once that runs out, then you have to go seek it. And at that time, you know, during an emergency, it might be very difficult to find food and water. Uh, so food, water, and hygiene, really. Uh, you know, being able to go to the bathroom uh, and having a system for that, even if the plumbing stops. And then, uh, you know, in order to be able to hunker down for an extended period of time, you need security as well. Uh, so concentrate on food, water, security, and hygiene. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think if you do that, then it kind of covers many bases. It covers many different types of scenarios and allows you to stay independent and not have to go to, you know, some kind of government center to ask for rations or whatnot, you know, because yeah. that, that has happened, you know, in history. Like, uh, I think I told you last time we spoke, um, right around the time when my family immigrated from Russia, my mother actually had to wait online for food. And, uh, when I was looking through her stuff, you know, a few years back, I found her rations card and she had wow. a card, but she had to go onto this line, wait for food. 
present her papers and then they would give her, you know, her grain or sugar or whatever it was at that time. I don't know what she was picking up, but mm -hmm. uh, that sucks. Like, I, I, I don't want that to ever happen to my generation, my family. So uh, that's really the most important thing. And, you know, um, it's up to us on how we spend our money. You know, some people, they want to spend their money, money on designer things and this and that and, you know, new sneakers. Or you could spend a few thousand dollars and really stock up on a year's worth of food for your family. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's vital and you know um, you can't use, Oh, I don't have enough space for that as an excuse because you could always get a cheap storage unit for, you know, yep. hundred bucks, 200 bucks a month and just load it up with whatever you need. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah. Uh, uh, this, uh, this is from the apex prepper. He goes, this is what's with the American map and the colored zones in your background here. And I see it too. There's like a <laughs> blue uh, and there's uh, purple. That's uh, territories. So, uh, wow. you know, along with doing civilian sales, we do a lot of uh, professional sales. We do uh, law enforcement sales. So, uh, those are the territories that are kind of owned by somebody. Not, you know, that's <laughs> territory map. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Philip. Also, is, is there anything we should be concerned about with the shaded map handling over your shoulder in the background? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these uh, are no. all the, the there's trolls that have any troll that's ever contacted Mira that you think keep track of that, and now here on the. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're all here, right? That's yeah. fine. I love it. I love it. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're an open book, so uh, yeah. there's nothing to troll us about. <laughs> uh, the see, uh, Prepper would love to see you. Uh, would you, on the Alex Jones show? Since you're an, would you, would Mira say, would you ever go on the Alex Jones show? Um, you know, <laughs> it, that'd be interesting. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to give it some thought. Uh, I'd rather go. On, a... I'd rather go on Joe Rogan. Yeah. And uh, if Alex Jones is there at the same time, me, Joe Rogan, and Alex Jones. That would be pretty epic. Actually. Alex, Joe, if you're listening, I, I think we should make that happen. We're all local here, and I could, you know, put you guys on some gas mask info. Yeah. Uh, uh, that'd be cool. Well, I mean, the, the new Joe Rogan studio looks like it's uh, it looks like he's using an Atlas survival shelter or something, and yeah. might as well have some, it, as far as where the location is, he probably he's should got, have. He's got a really, uh, he bought a really nice house here locally. Yeah. Uh, it's like a fourteen million dollar place, and fourteen million dollars in Austin gets you like a really crazy house. Wow. Um, so yeah, he's right on the water. He's got a beautiful place there. So I'd love to visit a studio. I'm going. Yeah. To so show. so Joe Rogan, please invite uh, Roman from Air Safety, and and you'll, everybody you'll write to Joe him. Rogan. Everyone Tom. write Joe Rogan. Let him know that way we need to bring <laughs> on Roman for this. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see. We just have a couple more minutes before I, 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 I we'll let you get going. There's uh, this is a good question because. Uh, it's I know the answer for it, but what what filter is best to protect against smoke? And I know that you there's you sent an email out recently. Sure, sure. So this is this is a great question. Um, so smoke, um, you know, smoke is a particulate. There's particulates in smoke, uh, and there's also gases that get released uh, when things burn. Uh, so you really want a multi gas filter that's coupled with a P3 filter. So the P3 will take out smoke particulates. Uh, and then the multi-gas filter will uh, filter out the gases that are produced uh, with things burning. The only thing, you know, a simple multi-gas filter won't do is convert carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide, allowing you to breathe it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is uh, an oxidizing agent, uh, an, an oxidizing agent which is used within some specialty filter uh, called hopcolite, and there's other derivatives of hopcolite. Uh, which oxidizes carbon monoxide, adds an oxygen atom to it, um, creating carbon dioxide, uh, which isn't as toxic and allows you to breathe it out. Uh, and that's used for smoke escape. Uh, out of our product line, we do have a product that is a multi-gas filter with a P3 included. Uh, it's called the VK450. Uh, we are actually getting quite a, a big batch of them in very soon. We're doing a pre-sale. Uh, it's only a few thousand units that we're getting in. Uh, so once it goes sold out, that next batch is fully sold out and we're not going to take any more orders until we have another batch secured. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've learned a lot during this experience uh, with back orders and stuff. And we're trying to like not do back orders, at, at, you know, anymore. Uh, we want to we want to make it very clear, uh, you know, the expectations of when a product's actually going to come in. So we have a, a few thousand units coming in. Once those are gone, um, they should be in within the next month. Uh, we're, you know, until we get that next batch after that, we're not going to release them again. Yeah. I, I just put a link in the, in, in the chat room for the, for the VK 450 smoke carbon filter. 
Uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be putting in an order order for that as well. Cause I have a few kits that I want them in. I imagine for a lot of like the fires that have been going on, especially on the West coast, it'd probably be a good filter to have for those type of situations. It is. I mean, especially if you're stuck, you know, you, you, you see that, um, you know, you live in a fire, uh, wildfire prone area and you think you might be stuck in your house when that happens. Um, that's, uh, you know, you, there's going to be carbon monoxide when you're indoors because carbon monoxide is produced in uh, oxygen poor environments. Uh, so if you're stuck in a burning house, yeah, carbon dioxide is definitely a big issue. And that's something you have to prepare for. Uh, if on the other hand, uh, you're stuck in a wildfire and uh, you're outdoors, the, you know, carbon monoxide isn't as much of an issue because there's oxygen flowing, you know, mm -hmm. freely. Uh, so, you know, more of a more of a factor in house fires. Yeah, and let's see. This, this maybe this is a final question for you. What? And I think I know the answer on this because you recommended this to me. What is a good resource to show the best method to decontaminate the mask after exposure? And you recommend uh, last year you recommended a cleaning solution that you use, and I now I have that in my prep. Yes, yeah, so I I, th I think what uh, Super Lambini super is asking Lambini. here is uh, uh, you know kind of a video of sorts. Uh, what's a good resource to show how to actually do it? Uh, so it really depends on the type of contaminant that you're decontaminating from because each type of contaminant will have its own procedure on how to neutralize it. Uh, for anything, you know, bio viral, I would recommend uh, the stuff called Allegro 5003-U. Yep. Uh, it's specifically, you know, tested to work on coronavirus. It's pretty cheap. Um, you know, you get like a big two gallon thing of it for like 20 something dollars and then uh, a capful makes a whole gallon of decontaminant. So, I mean, that much should be enough for, you know, many years. I mean, depending on, you know, how much you're decontaminating, but, um, you know, that, that's a, that's a, that's a great product to have. Uh, you know, as, as far as you know, a good, a good video resource on, on how to, you know, do this stuff, it, it's really made for professionals. Um, uh, mm -hmm. you know, people go to school on decontamination on proper, uh, usage of PPE on how to neutralize uh, certain compounds. So um, I would recommend, you know, taking a course on it uh, because you need some hands-on knowledge of how to do this stuff. I wouldn't just go by, uh, you know, watching a YouTube video for something yeah. so serious. Yeah, I bought, I bought the, I forget the full name of it, the 5003CU or whatever whatever that was. And I bought two bottles of it. And I'm like, man, why did I get two bottles? Because this one bottle is going to last me forever. So, Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, I use like five capsules. And then I just keep putting it into my uh, pressure. Uh, yeah. What is that thing? The uh, pesticide sprayer, garden sprayer. And uh, yeah. that's what I use to decontaminate things. Like when I get Amazon packages, I'll just spray them down. Yeah. Are you, are you still doing that with the packages then? I am uh, because, yeah. you know, lately, uh, recently it just came out that there's, uh, you know, 20,000 employees of Amazon mm -hmm. have contracted coronavirus mm -hmm. and it's been kind of put under wraps. And, you know, these people are packing your stuff and I'm, I'm still not 100 percent clear on whether, you know, how this virus is transmitted, how long it lives on surfaces. I don't think we've gotten a clear answer on that. There's a whole bunch of conflicting information. Um, so, you know, safe and sorry uh, then for better safe than sorry. And, and until I get something conclusive, you know, on how long it lives on surfaces, what it actually is, how many people are actually dying. I mean, you look on the internet and it's just full of information that goes both ways. Yeah. You know, there's people saying, Oh, it's not serious at all. And you shouldn't worry. And this is all big hoax. And then there's the other side that says, you know, run for the Hills. We're all going to die because coronavirus and I'll be the first person to take the vaccine. You know, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of in the middle and I, I just try to like look at both sides and try to get information, you know, and, yeah. uh, I, I, f I filmed a video w with that cleaning solution for like cleaning the boxes and I had it all done. And then I didn't know if it was relevant anymore. Cause then they're like, Oh, don't worry about that. It's a, we find that that's not, but I, I have this video in my back. Like, I guess I should probably release it now that I've synced with you on this, that it still might yeah. be worthwhile. So uh, that'd be good. By well, the way, cool. I like I like the the blue light in the background. Reminds yeah, me thanks. Of, yeah, reminds I, me of inversion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to make it a little soft lighter in the back, and and so so it's not as bright. And then I have this little light over here, and have some 
uh, top branding and you can see no, that's the, nice. I like, I like the side. You have some like pots and pans there. Is that? What yeah. I, well, I did that? a video on a cowboy, cowboy coffee and how to make uh, cowboy coffee like for my preps. Cause I, I realized that my coffee uh, preparedness measures weren't up to par for off grid scenarios. Cause I was using yeah. like, K cups. And so I'm like, well, I got to learn yeah. how to make cowboy coffee. And so then yeah. I recently did a video on that. Watch the video if you guys like it. <laughs> yeah, for, 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 for a good outdoor coffee, my best yeah. method has been uh, the Arrow Press. Yes, a lot of people of the love Arrow that. Press. Yeah. It's, it's compact. It's, uh, it's, it's very easy to use. I mean, there's not, you know, it's kind of foolproof. Yeah. Uh, that, you get the filters with it, which are tiny. Yep. Um, and a Hario grinder. It's a Japanese grinder. They're, they're pretty compact, small. And you can create kind of a little compact kit with it for... Off yeah, grid the, scenarios. The, yeah. The, I was. I've been looking for the a good manual grinder that's made. Like, like I'd love to have a Japanese one. I think that'd be awesome. Hario, Hario, Hario. Yeah, I'll, Hario. I'll look, Hario's great. I'll get, okay, I'm gonna look on on uh, Amazon or something and get that ordered. So yeah. I, I ended up getting something else, but uh, Japanese one would be nice. Well, yeah. we've been talking for an hour. Uh, we've had to answer all sorts of questions. I know we there's still some questions in the in the chat room, but uh, we'll try to get to those. But hopefully, we answered a lot of it. And the, again, the main point was to talk over Tenet, which I have in the cool background right here. Which, if you haven't seen the movie, definitely go and watch it. If you like uh, a mind uh, bender, if you don't like those, then this is going to be uh, it, it's a pretty complicated movie. But but in the fine especially in the final scene you're going to see about 350 mirror safety cm 6m gas mask with the particle mask filter in it just like what you see here uh, and it's a really cool it's a really cool movie it's really cool to see mirror safety on a product that i have be in a in a movie like that so uh, any other future movies that you have coming out uh, Roman or <laughs> um not yet we're we're in we're in talks with with some uh i i doubt we'll ever get anything as big as christopher nolan's you know 2020 blockbuster yeah. with all gas masks during a pandemic you know yeah, like, it's, <laughs> it's just like it's yeah, like crazy it's, yeah. that that even happened but uh yeah. you know I, I don't think we're gonna get anything that big again but uh who knows i mean you know i i live by the philosophy of let go and let god and uh you know everything that comes my way it's 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 all blessing and i'm very thankful for it and uh you know we try we try to do a good job so well, it's it's so cool to see like how things have progressed for the company and everything and now it's on the big screen and uh that more and more people are starting to think about this and there's new product lines coming out i, I have a uh working on the child mask uh filter from your safety as well mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. videos hopefully come out in a month if i can finish it so <laughs> uh, but yeah everyone make sure to smash that like button and <laughs> uh go to a uh, mirror safety si uh, site i provided links in the description box they have a lot of different products out there i have some uh, reviews coming up of some of the products and make sure you go watch tenet watch it with your cm 6 m gas mask and yep. you'll be totally in character for it <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun <laughs> so, so thanks for watching this live stream everyone and thanks special thanks to roman for appearing on it and i hope you guys enjoyed watching it Thanks for having me on, Cliff. Take care. All right. All right. Thanks a bunch. Bye.